here's a great tip for making concrete castings. And this was something that I didn't really learn about for years. And it makes such a huge difference and it's such a tiny little thing to do. <laughs> so what we've got here is just a little bit of cement powder. This is the same stuff that you're making your concrete or mortar out of anyway, except there's no sand or gravel mixed in with this. It's just the cement. We're going to add just a little bit of water to it. We're going to make a paste that's similar to cake batter or pretty warm butter. And then we're going to take a paintbrush and we're going to paste that inside of our mold before we apply our mortar. The reason that we do that is the very high concentration of Portland in the surface area is going to give you a lot of really fine detail and it's going to help to make sure that you don't have any honeycombing in the finished product. Let's go ahead and mix that up now. It doesn't take much water. Just a little bit more than that. see how creamy that looks. It's like smooth peanut butter. That's going to make sure we get a lot of fine detail in our casting. That's pretty much perfect there. Let's get started. When you apply the slurry into your mold, you have to be careful. Remove any excess. You don't want it to pool or be really thick of just the slurry. You just want this to skin the surface layer. Take out all of the areas where it's pooling or very thick. Once we've done that, it's time to put your mortar in here and it's very important that you do so before this slurry dries or skins over. If this dries or skins over, apply some more to it and then get your mortar in there right away. tap your mold if you want like this to help remove the air bubbles but using a palm sander as a vibrator will be a lot more effective. You can see as I vibrate it the air bubbles working their way to the surface. That's exactly what we're going for here. Now that we have it vibrated, we want to just screed the top. You can use a piece of wood, like a piece of 2x4, or a trowel works really well. If you're new to working with concrete, you're probably going to be inclined to overwork the concrete. And by what that what I mean there is you're just going to keep troweling and troweling trying to get it perfect, but it, as you can see it doesn't look perfect, so I should keep troweling, right? Wrong. One of the most important things to do is to know when to stop. When you first pour your concrete, knock it flat, trowel it a little bit, and then stop. That process raises a lot of water to the surface. As long as there's all that water sitting on the surface of your concrete, there's no way you're going to get a good finish on it. If you keep working it trying to get that good finish anyway, you compromise the finished strength of the concrete because there's simply too much water raised to the surface. So you get the concrete close and then leave it. When it's fresh, it looks very wet, very watery. In a very short amount of time, you'll notice that watery look goes away and it becomes somewhat hazy or matte looking. That's the point that you try to get a good finish on the concrete. You can do so with a trowel or you can do so with a wet sponge. Either one of those are a good way to finish concrete. You could even use both. Use the wet sponge to flatten it out and then a trowel to put a nice finish on it.
Now we just let that set up. I would probably leave this in the mold for anywhere from 24 to 72 hours depending on the temperature. The closer it is to 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the closer I'm going to be to 3 days. Whereas the hotter it gets, the sooner you can demold this. By applying the slurry first before we put the concrete or mortar in the mold, we're sure to get a really high quality, high detail finish, completely free of any imperfections. Here's an example of some here where I've used that same technique. And as you can see, there's no honeycombing at all with these. But look at this comparison. Here's one done the same way, but except no slurry. I, I vibrated the concrete, but it's just not as good. Painting that slurry gives you high quality finishes on cast concrete products.